to Niv Mazet's laboratory. As far as your opening hand goes, yeah, I think I like this. A little clunky with that City of Brass, but yeah, we're going to keep on this one. Why not? I like it. Uh, it's going to get Niv popped back up, and then we'll play against to ready, so uh, hopefully... Should be a uh, pretty fun match. Thankfully, with Niv Mezzet, it deals one damage to any target. So if we can get down Niv pretty quick, uh, we can hopefully keep Duretti in check. Keep him from slinging some of those artifacts around. Um, let's go ahead and lead off with a City of Brass. That way, at least be online for Brainstorm. And we could hold on to Brainstorm, but I think at this point right now, um, with us only having two lands in our hand and hopefully trying to get to Chromatic Lantern, I don't mind going for that. So let's go and get on City of Brass, and then anything else is going to pass the turn to our opponent. We're playing Niv Mezzet. Spell cannot be countered flying. Whenever you draw a card, Niv deals one damage to any target. Then whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, you draw a card. All right, let's see what drawn to. Drawn to Reef. Let's go and get down Reef. Yeah, because either way we'll be taking... Let's go and get down Fire Mines. Then we'll start getting some Brainstorm going. Uh, let's go and go for Blue Activation. And that'll be Blue Red. Yes, City of Brass. Fine. There we go. Get the Cascade Bluffs. Let's get the blue red. Let's get down Fire Mines Research, and then we're going to pass the turn to our opponent. We're playing against the Ready, Scrap Savant. Uh, plus two ability, draw up to two cards. Excuse me, discard up to two cards, then draw that many cards. Then for a minus two activation, sacrifice an artifact. If you do, return target artifact from your graveyard to the battlefield. Then for a minus ten, you get an emblem that says whenever an artifact is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, return that to the battlefield at the beginning of the next instep. Okay, whew, there we go. We made it. Uh, let's go to get down Reef. And, uh, yeah, now that I think about it, let's just kind of get down Chromatic Lantern. Yeah, I like it's going to allow us to, uh, just kind of get, yeah, I kind of like that. Let's do that. Let's get down to Chromatic Lantern. There we go. Get down Chromatic Lantern, and then we've already made the land drop for the turn. Yes, we have. We'll go and pass the turn to our opponent. So, we did cover both commanders. It is free time. We can talk about whatever we want. That's going to be Niv Mezzet. Now, what are we doing in Niv's lab? Uh, we are looking to, uh... Pretty much just get some good electricity going. Uh, get some good stuff down like Young Pyromancer, get those tokens going, and then uh, just draw some cards and deal some damage. That is, uh, this is the perfect blue-red commander that doesn't, you know, you can combo off with Niv in numerous different ways, or if you want to build some sort of uh, storm deck, you can definitely do that. But if you're looking for a blue-red deck that is just value city, um, this is uh, this is it. I enjoy it. Uh, it's going to be one, two, three, four. Five with Teleria West. Uh, do we want to go for Thirst for Knowledge just to kind of dig just a little bit deeper into our library? Okay, um, let's do this. Yeah, let's go and go for Thirst for Knowledge. It'll give us a little bit of extra... Actually, let's do this. Let's go for Compulsive Research. Target player draws three cards. Yeah, I don't mind doing it this way. Let's do that. Let's go for Compulsive Research. That's going to put a charge counter on Fire Mind's research. I've got a lot of research going on in the lab today. I like it. Fire Mind and Compulsive. And then, do we want to discard a land card? This can be one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'm actually okay with that. So we have to dis discard two cards if we don't. Um, do we want Rhystic Study, too? Yeah, let's go and discard a land card. At this point right now, uh, we're going to get rid of Island, because at least with uh, Bloodstained Mire, what we can do is grab one of our... Uh, and grab one of our dual sources, and then we can hopefully, if we hit another land, uh, we can hold on to Teleri West uh, to grab one, you know, some sort of zero converted mana cost spell, uh, whether it be Pact of Negation or some sort of artifact that we need to get going. All right, so anything else is going to kick it over to our opponent. But yes, like I mentioned, basically we're trying to get as much value out of our instant and sorceries as possible. So getting down to some extra tokens, getting that damage going. I'm really excited that we got down Fire Mines Research really quick. This is one of those cards that, um, you know, if you draw into a really latent commander, it just feels like a completely dead card. But if you can get it down, like on turn two, and just really kind of get those charge counters going, um, excited to see how it's going to play out. We'll see if, I don't know, it seems a little slow, especially if it sits there for a long time. But, you know, being able to at least kind of go for an activation to draw some cards is always uh, it's always nice to have that option and kind of forces somebody maybe to uh, uh, use some sort of artif or enchantment removal that maybe they don't want to use yet just to kind of take care of it. And plus that five damage is, uh, I like that. I like spell like enchantments that you can get that, those counters going. Um, I think at this point right now, since we do have Chromatic Lantern on the battlefield, uh, we're not going to crack Bloodstained Mire because that at least allows us to kind of shuffle some stuff away. Uh, with Brainstorm. So we're going to go and hold on to that Bloodstained Mire at this point right now. But we do need to get some damage done onto Ready. Alright, so we draw onto Karanos. 
Yeah, and actually, if we want to go for Karanos, that's really going to allow us to kind of put some pressure on our opponent. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get down Karanos. And once we get down Karanos, that allows us to kind of start filtering our draws out and start to put some pressure on Doretti. Uh, it's going to get down Teleria West, and then anything else is going to pass the turn to our opponent. Yeah, the sequencing, if it probably... I, we should, probably should have discarded Teleria West off of that compulsive research. So that would have put us in a position to where we could have gotten down Niv Mezit. Uh, but it's still kind of weird getting used to playing triple blue and triple red off of a commander. You just forget how often you need just need like all hands on deck access to some of that mana. So a um, little bit of a sequencing error on that one. But hopefully we can bounce back. We'll have uh, Karanos coming down and we can deal some damage to Felden. And then also... Uh, you know, tap out for Niv next turn and get some good stuff going. Now, as far as out of the graveyard, we're just basically looking at, uh, we've got Pint in the graveyard, which is going to be those, uh, plus one counters, those Thopters. All right, so we should be able to kind of do something about that. All right, drawing the counter spell. Um, yeah, let's go and take care of Felden. Yeah, because if, if they go for Felden off Pint in the graveyard, that's not going to be um, the best for us. So let's go and deal three damage to Felden. All right, so they're going to go for Chaos Warp in response to that. <laughs> if they do get something on the battlefield, that's going to be a 4-4. Okay, so that three damage is going to fizzle out. But at least we got rid of that reanimation uh, from our opponent. Let's go and tap out for Niv. Okay, that's going to be one damage being dealt to us. We'll get down Niv, and then next turn we have a ton of card draw in our hand that we can get going. We have Brainstorm, we have Thirst for Knowledge. Um, also with Kyrnos, that turns out... That's one of the fun things about Niv is that when you get down Kyrnos, Niv pretty much 100% of the time always turns on Devotion. And for Kyrnos, I love it. Um, let's go and push in on Doretti too. Uh, Kyrnos is mad that his Lightning Bolt was dodged by a Chaos Warp, so he's going to go after Doretti. And so we'll see if the... Uh, Get get them to get that exiled. So it's gonna be exiled with those counters on it, and we'll go and get that popped up. There we go. There's the exile. Oh, cool. They added a little time counter to it. That's pretty neat. Yeah, if you didn't know, the uh, Magic Online added some counters to their uh, most recent update. So uh, as you can tell, they've got the little kind of counters on Fireminds Research. They have a new little Planeswalker loyalty thing. So I don't know, little things like that always kind of make the game look a little bit nicer. Uh, but yeah, as far as what our, we've got going on our side of the board, we've got some good stuff. Um, this is what makes Niv so good, is we cast Brainstorm. That's going to be three damage to any target that we want, so we're going to be able to start keeping Doretti in check. And at the same time, we're still getting some really nice card advantage. A Volcanic Offering, Destroy Target, Non-Basic Lane, You Don't Control. So choose Target, Non-Basic Lane. I guess we'll just go and choose Teleria West. Yeah, so we choose Teleria West, and then choose target creature. You oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. They already chose. <laughs> I didn't see that little tag right there. We'll choose Niv, too. Oh, that's a bummer. And we're going to send that damage over to Doretti. Anyway, we just blew up two of our lands. I, I didn't see that last part right there. I thought we were just... Picking a land. Dang it. All right, that's a bummer. All right, so we need to get some stuff moving. <laughs> We've got Niv sent back to the command zone, and we blew up our own land, so we set it back. So sorry about that. And then let's go and send three damage over to Doretti. We can still bounce back from this. It was just... Um, I haven't seen that spell cast against me on Magic Online, and I, I didn't realize that they'd already picked a land off of that. So let's go to get down Arid Mesa, and I guess at this point we'll just start... Uh, yeah, going for Dak Faden. That's going to give us the quickest access to some card draw. So let's do that. Let's go and get down Dak Faden. We just, like I mentioned, we put on hard mode. Um, let's do. We want to gain control of target artifact. We can minus two. Or if we wanted to, we could actually gain control of their land, that Dark Steel Citadel to kind of make up for it. Yeah, I think I like that. Let's do that. Let's go for minus two on Dark Steel Citadel. All right, there we go. So it's going to make it for that land drop. So we're kind of back in the same spot. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then hopefully we start making a few more land drops. Um, anything else is going to pass the turn to our opponent. So um, now that we do at least have Niv-Mezit back in the command zone, we probably will end up going for a Brainstorm. 
That's one of two things it's going to allow us to do for Brainstorm. It's going to allow us to at least get a charge counter onto Fire Mind's Research, and at the same time, uh, we can set up our Karanos trigger to where we can deal some damage uh, to Duretti, kind of depending on what we get going on. And if we need to kind of shuffle up the top part of our library, we do have Intuition to uh, kind of get some more stuff going from our opponent. So discard a card, then draw that many cards. All right, and yeah, let's go ahead and go for that Brainstorm, because I want to deal some damage to... Uh, <laughs> To Duretti for for uh, blowing up our land. <laughs> Let's kind of go for brainstorm. Draw three cards. And that'll put another charge counter on Fire Mind's research too. Okay, gutter. Oh, that is beautiful. Um, two cards. What cards do we want to put back? Let's go and put Ristic Study on top, and then let's go and put um, Supreme Will on top. Okay, so that'll allow us to kind of filter through that Karanos card draw, and we can also still get that Dak Fade and activation too. Let's go three damage to Duretti. And then what we can do is we can get down Gutter Snipe. That's going to be one, two, three. And that still leaves us going for that two damage to each opponent, which is not really going to be able to redirect that over to Dak Faden. Um, let's go ahead and go for the plus ability off of Dak. Draw two cards, discard two cards. Hour of Devastation and Ristic Study. Um, let's go ahead and discard Ristic Study. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, it's going to be really hard for us to get Ristic Study going. And then Hour of Devastation. Yeah, I kind of want to just keep up our card advantage. I like everything that we've got going on in our hand. We can basically just operate at instant speed on our opponent. So I'm just going to get rid of Hour of Devastation. Um, let's go and get down Gutter Snipe. That way we at least kind of have something to kind of start working towards. Um, that's going to be red. And that still keeps us online for A, Counterspell, Supreme Will, or any sort of thing out of our hands. So let's go and push in with Karanos. And we'll actually still go and swing in. Do we want to swing in at Duretti? Because it'll come back as a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, that's fine. We'll go and swing at Duretti. Just kind of keep it down. And then after that, we'll start generating some value with Gutter Snipe and start attacking our opponent. At least it kind of, by us swinging in at Duretti, it's going to force them to, like, either recast Duretti next turn and then get it down. So, um, anything else? No, let's go and pass the turn to our opponent. So, uh, like I mentioned, pretty much our entire hand is instant speed action. So, we've got Intuition, Thirst for Knowledge, Counterspell, and Supreme Will. And that is a ton of card advantage, so we'll see what we can do as far as uh, getting down uh, some of this other stuff. Um, yeah, that's fine. That's just a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, that, that's nothing too crazy. If they want to swing in a deck, they can certainly go for that. Okay, they will be swinging in a deck. That's going to take care of deck fading. And if we had, uh, oh man, it'd be our, our kingdom for a young pyromancer, that'd be really nice with what we've got going on in our hand. And let's see what else they get down. We still have Counterspell up to go for. If not, we'll definitely be going for Intuition or something like uh, Supreme Will to get some good stuff. Enters the battlefield, deals 6 damage to target creature. Okay, let's go ahead and make them, force them to use the Gutter Snipe. Um, use the Evoke. Okay, so they will target Gutter Snipe. Um, do we want to go for Intuition on that one? It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 mana left over for them. Yeah, let's go and go for intuition. I, I like that. Let's go for intuition. Okay, so we're going to get a charge counter on Fire Mind's Research and also trigger Gutter Snipe for dealing with that two damage. Uh, basically, what we can do with uh, intuition is at least kind of search up one of our token generators. That way, it's going to allow us to kind of start to build up some sort of army and uh, kind of start attacking our opponent. Okay, let's get this popped out. Let's grab Talrand, and then let's go ahead and grab... Actually, let's let's grab the Flying option. Um, let's grab Talrand, let's go for Dawson of Perfection, and let's go and grab Murmuring Mystic. That way we at least have a ton of Flying options. It's going to make it a lot easier for us to uh, take care of Duretti on that side of the battlefield. We'll click Done. And that'll give us a ton of options to go for. Okay, so we're going to get that. It's like a mini Force of Will, our opponent said. All right, so they did get the uh, the Gutter Snipe, and then we'll get that extra trigger going. And they do give us Dawson of Perfection in our hand, which is A-OK -okay with me. So we can get down Dawson, get those Human Wizard tokens, and then once we get the final iteration to flip, uh, then we'll be in a pretty good position. So let's see what we draw. We still have the Kyranos trigger. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and start sending that damage up top. We can definitely outrace our opponent. And that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. That's going to be six total mana. Yeah, let's go and get down Dawson of Perfection. 
I would love to get down uh, Sky Diamond, but unfortunately it's um, it's going to come into play tap, so we can't get that down. Okay, then anything else, we're going to pass the turn to our opponent. So next turn, we are looking at, it's still going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We'll have 6 mana. Uh, we will still be online for at least Thirst for Knowledge and Supreme Will, which will get a few more wizards onto the battlefield. Um, once we control 3 or more wizards, we're going to be able to uh, transform Dawson of Perfection. So it's basically going to put us in a spot to where we can get down a couple Delvers, and then after that, uh, we can uh, hopefully kind of start attacking our opponent. Um, if they do end up getting down to ready, that's fine. It's not the end of the world. We can still at least kind of put some pressure on our opponent um, by swinging in with some of our creatures. The only thing we need to do now is hopefully get down Niv and then try to take the game over. That's one of the downsides to the deck is that um, once uh, Niv gets out there and he... Uh, <laughs> He gets removed. It's a little hard to, to uh, get him back out there with that triple uh, triple blue, triple red, but we'll try our best. All right, so we have Hellkite coming down, five damage. Oh, no, it's going to take care of Dawson. Okay. And let's see what we draw into. It's going to be Frantic Research. Yeah, let's go ahead and send that damage up top to our opponent. It's going to knock him down to 20, uh, 22. And then let's go ahead and go for frantic re yeah let's go for frantic search we, we need to get some uh, we need to get our land drops going okay there we go beautiful um, and also once we cast one more instant or sorcery we can go for that activation and deal five damage to the hellkite so we'll still be in a pretty good position uh, discard two cards let's go ahead and get rid of it at this point right now I guess we'll get rid of steam augury. Oh, and we should have tapped another land. Sorry about that. Uh, let's go and get rid of Steam Augury. Yeah, and we're going to get rid of Sky Diamond. I I'm okay with that. Um, we need to tap up to three lands. Yeah, we should have tapped one more land. Sorry about that. That would allow us to get a little bit of extra mana. Click OK. Untap those lands. Let's go and get down Wooded Foothills. And then that's going to put us on. We can actually go for Thirst for Knowledge or Supreme Will on our, our opponent's turn and still get that activation going. So what we're going to do that, we're going to pass the turn. Or if they do end up casting something, uh, we can still go for Counterspell and then uh, still go for that activation and take care of the Hell Kite. So it'd be a pretty good thing for us to go. Yeah, that, that's the. Uh, I was just worried about making sure we got down. Uh, Got down the uh, the the frantic search to hit a land drop, and I just completely forgot about the untap clause. All right, so opponent's gonna tap out for Duretti. Do we want to use burn a counter spell on this counter spell that still leaves us enough to go for an activation of Fireburn's research? Yeah, I think I like that because that puts them in a position to where we can might be able to use Supreme Will if they tap out for it again next turn. So let's go and go for counter spell. That's gonna be blue and then blue. Let's send Reddy back to the command zone. And if they do swing in with the Hellkite, we'll go for the uh, Firemind's Research activation. All right, there we go. Div Mez is going to jump out from his laboratory and <laughs> knock down that Hellkite out of the air. All right, so the, uh, the little bug's going to be coming across the floor. It's going to knock us down to 16. And then uh, let's see what we can't get going off of a Karanos. All right, draw into Steam Vents, and that'll allow us to draw another card off of Karanos, too. Draw into Mana Drain. So right now, we're looking at eight total mana to get down Niv. It's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we'll be eight off of Flooded Strand. So they've got one card in the hand um, that does leave us open on Duretti. They go for the minus two. They can sacrifice an artifact, return target artifact, um, card from your graveyard to the battlefield. But do we want to leave up Mana Drain? Just as a little bit of a protection. Because they can immediately get down to ready and then get those uh, tokens on the battlefield. Yeah, let's go and get down Niv. If, if they get down Pent, that's fine. We, we can... But to get those tokens going, it's going to be really hard for us to uh, kind of control that. You know what, let's just go and pass the turn at this point right now. I want to get down Niv, but if they go for Duretti, and they go for that minus two and bring back Pent out of the graveyard, and they get a bunch of Thopters, we are sitting at 16, and that might, unless we have some sort of way to kind of protect ourselves, that might be enough to kind of uh, put some pretty good pressure on us. So let's just go and pass the turn to our opponent, and then we'll try to go for... Uh, Supreme Will and try to catch Duretti, or if we want to, we can go for Mana Drain, and that'll give us a little bit of extra mana for next turn to get down Niv, or at least kind of paying for that Commander Tax. Yeah, let's go go for Mana Drain on that. 
That'll give us at least four mana for next turn. And then let's see if we can't dig for something that we can either A, get on Div Mezzet with um, that extra mana, or if we can get something else that'll kind of help us out. Uh, let's go for Supreme Will real quick, too, because um, we're going to have something to kind of show for next turn, especially with us uh, tapping for that mana drain. Okay, that's going to be Stroke of... Oh, there we go. Stroke of Genius. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly what we want. Ooh, Force of Will, too. Now, this is a pretty rough one. So what we can do is if we go for Force of Will, we can exile Thirst for Knowledge. We get down Niv. That's going to give us protection for Niv and hopefully kind of stabilize from there. I think I like Force of Will, especially with us sitting at 12. Yeah, let's do that. Let's grab Force of Will. Just gonna put those on the bottom and anywhere. I'd love to have Stroke of Genius, but if we're tapping out for Niv Mezzet next turn, um, this is what we need to get going. So, and um, then we'll also hold off on the activation because we can draw a card. Uh, we'll wait till we at least have Niv on the battlefield for that. Halimar Depths, and then we draw the Sulphur Falls. Um, let's go and get down Niv. Let's go and get down. Um, have that four mana to our mana pool. Let's go and get down Niv. All right, that does turn on Devotion for carrying those two. Um, let's go and get down Halimar Depths. That way, if we don't like what's on top of our library, or at the least, we can sequence it with Karanos to where we have a little bit more damage to our opponent. And that's exactly what we do, do not want to see uh, at this point right now. I was going to put those on top in any order, and we'll still go and crack Arid Mesa. Um, do we want to go for Thirst for Knowledge? Yeah, let's go and do that. Let's go and crack Arid Mesa. Let's go and grab Volcanic Island. Let's go and go for Thirst for Knowledge. It's going to send one damage up top, knock him down to 21. And at this point right now, we're just going to discard two cards. Uh, let's go and discard... Um, we we'll definitely want to hold on to Reliquary Tower. Let's get rid of Steam Vents, and we'll go and get rid of uh, Island. Be one damage up top to our opponent. And that still keeps us online for Fact of Fiction and Force of Will, too. So it always yielded Nim. And then we did make the land drop for the turn. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and swing in for six with Karanos. It's going to knock our opponent down to 12, and then we'll go ahead and pass the turn to our opponent. So if they do end up tapping out for Duretti, we still have Force of Will and Factor Fiction to go for. And that'll allow us to kind of stop whatever they get going on their side of the battlefield. Uh, then next turn, we're at least looking at five in the air, which is going to put our, put our opponent down to seven. And then hopefully, um, we can get a uh, little bit of extra damage from Karanos, and that might be more than enough for us to kind of maybe kind of close it out. We do have Power Mancer's Goggles. Uh, once we do get that down, that's going to turn something like a Prophetic Bolt into a really nice spell. Um, we can use that to uh, kind of amplify out any sort of red spell that we do draw into. Or even something like the uh, the new spell from, uh, is it, what is it called? I can't remember what it's called, but um, it's another one that we can definitely get. Uh, I can't, it's basically like double blue, double red, and you can deal X damage and draw X cards, which is just everything that you want to be doing in Niv Mezzet. Our right, opponent's going to go for Liquid Metal Cooling on Niv, so it's going to turn him into Artifact. So we'll see what sort of spell they're going to show for it uh, with Coding. Each player exiles all artifacts from their lands. Yeah, let's go and go... Well, let's get the card draw going off Niv. And then let's go and go for... Uh, let's go for Force of Will on that. That's going to trigger Firemind's Research and also get Niv going too with that extra card draw. Oh, look at that. See, this is where you get Niv on the battlefield. It is just value city. I love it. Okay, so I'm going to knock them down to 10. And then next turn, we do need to draw into a instant or sorcery to get down Fire Mind's Research. That'll be 5 damage for sure. And then let's see what we draw into. Hopefully, we do draw into an instant or sorcery. And then search for Ascanta. That's going to be 3 damage. Let's go ahead and... Actually, if we just target the... Uh, the yeah, the little bug over there, that'll take care of it, and then we can just go and swing in uh, unchecked off of that. Okay, it's going to get the suspend counters. Um, let's go ahead and get down, go to our main phase. Uh, let's go ahead and swing in. That's going to be uh, 11 coming across. That should take care of our opponent. They have one card left in the hand, and then if something else happens, we'll do some of this stuff on the back end. But we should be able to swing and get some damage done on our opponent. And then uh, pretty much close it out. Niv Mezzet way. Get down Karanos Beat Sticks. I, I like it. Karanos and Niv Mezzet, they're like, uh, they're two buddies. They're going to move in and get an apartment together. Because this is, uh, <laughs> they enjoy what they got going on. All right, we're going to knock our opponent down to negative one. I do apologize if this game was a little bit clunky. Um, 
I'm recording in the morning and to be honest, Nave is a brand new deck. So there's just little lines of play that I mess up and it kind of gets in my kitchen as far as commentary goes. So long story short, we got there at the end. We're able to kind of close it out against already. And if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.